somebody told me a story related to time that uh, you know time will come on each and every door they will knock your door but you know most of the time we don't open our doors for the time so that's why i say that you know you have to be persistent the time will come for you if you open the door it will be yours if you don't open the doors it will not be yours hello friends welcome to yet another episode of webisode i have promised you that i will bring the best in the project management field for you guys to learn understand and apply the concepts what they are applying today our guest is a very prestigious guest i like him because whenever i click hashtag #pmp one name always appear and that name is varun and the feedback i am getting for this guy is that he is kind he is helpful he is not a teacher but he is a mentor and he is sharing my dream a dream does not become reality through magic it takes sweet determination and hard work this is so true and the dream without deadline is never a goal is always a dream so varun help others to achieve their dream their dream of becoming pm let me give a brief introduction of about varun and then we can get back to him and ask him varun has over 10 years of extensive work experience as a project and program manager in industry domain he has a solid balance between project leader sme and technical resource with reputation as a self starting manager and that is very important in all aspects of project including requirement identification resource allocation workflow planning and cost control we all know he is an excellent communicator he leverages technical business and financial acumen to communicate effectively with client executives and their respective team expert in agile and he has a sure formula of getting pmi acp which we will talk about later is also expert in waterfall project management methodologies able to manage large project team and known for high quality deliverables that meet or exceed timeline budgetary targets so with this i welcome you varun and thank you very much for honoring us with your presence thank you so much amir for this opportunity and um, first of all thank you for these nice words i'm uh, glad that you are recording it because i want to make sure that my wife listens to all these good things <laughs> from you <laughs> I, i i think it's a good start to my day so that as soon as she gets up it's like early for me so uh, but i want to make sure she listens to this that you know people are saying good things about me <laughs> okay okay so varun can you please share your life journey with us sure sure so um uh you know as uh, in the brief introduction which you gave me i i started my career with uh, business analysis and then quickly moved to project management uh my father is a retired professor in india okay. and uh, you know since my childhood i used to teach uh, like he was a mathematics professor so i used to you know take it from him and i used to teach other students i think uh, that is something is in my blood to teach and uh, from there i started my journey of whatever i used to do i i mean i used to learn i started growing and i started teaching uh, i came to us in 2012 uh, i came for my masters and uh, then you know i was i was applying for jobs and i i did my pmp at that time and wherever i was trying to you know secure a pmp training kind of position uh i was never get an op- opportunity i was in like you know mid 20s at that time and uh, people were saying you're too young uh, you you're too young for this and okay. uh, but i think one reason is that with consistency that you know you will get eventually you will get something so i c- continued applying looking for like i i don't hesitate asking for help and that's what okay. i did and finally i got the uh, opportunity to teach so i grabbed that opportunity uh my name became quite popular in uh, washington dc area dmv area i started teaching for many providers around that area and then after some time i thought uh, that you know what let me start making money for myself so okay. that's when okay. edu hubspot okay. was born 
and uh, you know i along with my team and everyone else we uh, we we started providing trainings we went to b2b uh, high, uh, you know got some good business contracts and then we uh, moved into the middle east market where uh, we converted our uh, uh, simulator exam simulator into um, what you call into arabic language so middle east we became quite popular and now we are just adding more and more courses now it's, it's a journey that's how i'll put it a really lovely journey especially the way you convert the english language into arabic so that that market can be grasped so everyone wants to excel in their field they can take this model and they can utilize it like you tailored this is the exactly tailoring bmi is asking tailor the approach according to the customer so you tailor the uh, your simulator according to your major customer that's exactly. great okay varun there are so many lessons that i can see in your journey what mm -hmm. are the three lessons that we can learn and implement in our life to improve our life sure so, so first of all uh, you know the one of the major lessons i would say is hard work and i think this was one of your initial statement also when you said uh, i think hard work is the key to success we all say that you know you have to be lucky you have to be you, you know uh, get the right opportunity at the right time i would say hard work is always the top if you don't have the hard work luck will not favor it's it says right uh, luck favors the brave so okay. that's how i will put that you know hard work is the most important than persistence um you know when i was a child you know somebody told me a story related to time that uh, you know time will come on each and every door they will knock your door but you know most of the time we don't open our doors for the time so that's why i say that you know you have to be persistent the time will come for you if you open the door it will be yours if you don't open the doors it will not be yours simple as that uh, other than hard work and persistence i think the third okay. lesson is to be humble uh, i i certainly feel that whatever you do you have to be a humble person you know humility should be in you and uh, just make sure that uh, you know you accept everyone with both hands that's that's how it is that's great that's great hard work persistent and be humble over on very important thing with this old thing whenever we get the students and i have a simple way to say that if you want to do bmp this much hours this much time but whenever i say about hard work a question always come i will do smart work so how do you compare hard work versus smart work okay that's a see in in passing pmp you actually need both hard work and smart work but smart work does not equate to shortcut lot of people come okay. to me and they say that uh, that varun if i skip this can i pass the exam if i just take off from two weeks uh, from work can i can i pass the exam see yes you can but this is not true for everyone right this is not the intended course uh, path which we really want you to take so smart work means you don't have to study unnecessary things which which are not required of course if you want to grow in your career in the project management field then yes you may refer it but for passing the pmp exam both smart work as well as hard work which is consistency is very very important so smart work and hard work is required if you want to succeed in pmp and anywhere in your life so varun now if you can change anything in your journey one thing only one thing <laughs> and it What? cannot be your wife <laughs> <laughs> no i don't want to change it because she will hear this for sure <laughs> one thing i want to change uh, in my life um, i have really no clue about <laughs> what i want to change i was honestly a very notorious kid um, okay. in in my you know undergrad Okay. and uh, i really don't want to change that notorious <laughs> this <is a> person <laughs> i used to be always outspoken and uh, you know talking to everyone and I that worked no... out that and then that worked, worked out. out yeah that that really worked <laughs> out yeah i yeah. think one i would say is that one change is that when i came to us over here i saw that you know everyone was like more like a technical person they had their technical uh, knowledge when i say technical i'm more related to that you know coding and stuff like that i really think that you know i could have 
got that I, I think that that's one thing or probably i would have done an uh, mba <laughs> that's that's one thing which i always miss but i am really not sure what i could change to trust me okay okay now let's talk about apple uh, elephant in the room how to clear pmp exam before the summer okay sorry i was on mute so yes uh, that's a very good question so first of all it is possible it is very much possible okay. that you you can clear the exam before december however again you know i'll go back to your point of hard work and persistence that is very very important and no shortcuts should be allowed so uh, i'm actually teaching my last class in the end of uh, october and uh, okay. for, for the entire year for this last course and how okay. we are planning to do in that case amir is that uh, first we will be going through with each and every student a step by step study okay. plan so we'll be giving okay. them homeworks making sure that you know like giving them deadlines all the students and i'll be personally following up with each and every student of mine to make sure that they understand they do the right stuff my goal is okay. that within next one month they at least go through the first round of study and when i say okay. first round of study what i am expecting is i want them to watch my videos all the course videos i want them to read pimbok and uh, also from the timeline perspective my expectation is that uh, students should study around 2 hours on weekdays couple of more hours over the weekend then within one month if there are no unknown unknowns this should be easily achievable then in the month of november my target for my students would be to give the 4 hour practice exams revision of notes what they have made through videos through uh, you know reading pimbok and other things uh, based upon the scores in the, those 4 hour practice exams we we, we can target the actual exam uh, so uh, in middle to end of november all the information from the four days of training which i'll be giving on october 31st november 1 7 and 8 basically it's a weekend uh, you know students would be able to apply that knowledge to make sure that everything is fresh in their mind and go for the exam so this is a two month period which i'm hoping for one month i am deliberately taking for the buffer period because not everyone would be able to score a good percentage in the four hour exams so that's how, how the goal is one of the problem amir which i'm seeking uh, which i'm seeing in this is approaches since we are closer to the time date it's i think it's uh, uh, mentality of students that they try to rush through things if they don't lose that uh, momentum everything is going as per their plan i think this is easily achievable by end of november to middle of december but they have to start now no more thinking it's time to action that's how i will put it it's time to action i really like your strategy no hi fi nothing simple straight forward straight forward and let's go to the target you have and said that uh, cut this cut that no watch your videos which that is 35 pdus right yes 35 35 pdus watch each and everything read pim book and that is mandatory because yes. so many people try to cut the pim book no you have to read the pim book exactly. then go to the questions to go to the questions now in the questions there is always a myth do 200 400 even 3000 questions yeah. how what do you recommend how many questions should the person do or the standard formula if you are getting 70 80% that's enough for you yeah so, so that's a that's a good question so our questions are typically on a difficult end okay so um, you know if someone is scoring in 70s early 70s in uh, edu hubspot uh, questions then this means that they are ready for the exam so people typically don't get in 70s so okay. majority uh, most of the people who use our edu hubspot simulator in the 4 hour exams i'm talking about they score more than around 65 to 70% a prepared test taker okay. now okay. the industry standard is if you go on google you know everyone will give their own number someone will say 70 someone will say 80s just to be on a sure shot you know they want 80s so now people come with the same mentality and start using edu hubspot simulator and then the realization is there <laughs> that you are scoring 65 you know 60s and stuff like that so again it depends how many questions uh, typically uh, you know I, we offer around 1100 questions uh, overall in the entire simulator but uh, many times there are students who have solved more than 1100 questions and i give them recommendations what more questions to do if required 
but um, i would say 95% of the people this 1000 questions is more than sufficient and there have been few instances where a student has given like around one test like 200 questions test and they scored let's say 80 or more than 75 for those folks i don't tell them to even solve the other questions i just say you are ready momentum is right just go for the exam so so again see my point is that there is no set formula <clears throat> for passing for someone 3000 would be less for someone only 200 would be good enough so there is no average i could put it over here but i think since we are running against time and i seriously want everyone to pass the exam before it changes in january we really are not sure how the exam would picture it would be more difficult or easier it's better when we know who our enemy is kind of not an enemy it's not a right analogy but whatever i'm saying we know what it is and hit the chord at that time that's that's how i'll put it i really like your methodology that for everyone approach must be tailored i really never like that thing one approach fit to all that if you are doing well if you are getting as you said that your belly curve is more towards the difficult you are not following the same pmp standard like some questions are very easy than middle you have yeah. more questions than the last you have high question you have more difficult question i would say your belly of the questions lies more towards difficult questions that right yes, if you are getting 70 percent on edu f4 questions you should go for the exam and don't wait at all exactly. and with the, with the online exam you have that luxury because before online exam, you have to see what are the availability in the centers and how you can do. But with exactly. the online, you can give exam. Maybe even if I go and check, I hope I can get it for tonight or even tomorrow. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So that's exactly. a good thing that how you do the exam. Now, we have an approach that watch your videos, read the book, do the questions. And go towards your mentor if you are following varun approach okay ask him if i am prepared or not if you are following my approach or anyone else ask your teacher exactly that exactly i have this much courage what should i do exactly. ask for help as you said one of the good thing is be humble be humble to ask for help because anyone who is teaching you pmp he has gone through that journey exactly. he knows how hard it is and pmp is not a cup of cake that you can do and solve easily it is exactly. difficult to do pmp exam and with the exam changing in december 31st of december is the last day so you should try to give exam and as varun said if you make your decision it is possible to clear exam but with sheer hard work smart work and consistency right varun absolutely absolutely we have okay. to make sure we have the hard work we, we have the hard work now some question about pmi acp mm -hmm. because i have seen on your linkedin profile that you give 100 percent guarantee or a sure proof that you can clear pmi acp so mm -hmm. can, can you share it since i am preparing for pmi acp <laughs> sure. So, uh, see, one of the problem, Amir, um, which I was telling you about uh, is people don't have the continuity and the momentum. Something at their professional life or personal life hit them. And then, you know, there, there's always uh, they, they, they always take 10 steps back instead of taking it forward with ACP. First of all, it's a kind of easier exam as compared okay. to PMP. So that's the first okay. thing. Uh, okay. Other thing is uh, that, you know, I trust my mentor. So Nidhi, uh, she's our ACP mentor and she takes okay. care of it. She's a wonderful teacher. I okay. personally took the mentoring from her. She made sure okay. that, you know, I passed. So okay. I know who my teacher is and I have okay. full trust in her that, you know, she will make sure that, you know, again, Amir, I think all you, myself, Nidhi, we all are very passionate about what we do. And if you, you know, mix your passion with the work, what you do, you will go extra mile to make sure the other person is successful. Sure, so sure. ACP, 100% surety. Yes, you have to be continuous. You have to get the momentum. And within one month, just follow. Again, I don't want my student to go on Google and start typing. As you said, ask your teacher. I am there to guide them that what exactly is needed, whether it is good, whether it is bad. I will be honest person with you and I'll tell you. That's why the approach for ACP is like too, very, very, very successful. Okay, okay. So the same approach, like you have step one, step two, step three, same approach is applied in PMP also that how that's how basically your PMP mentor program, that is your platinum program, right? That is, that is the major yes. program PMP yeah. because I saw that video. 
there i saw the video you basically suggested that program if someone wants to do he can go for pmp mentor program and mm -hmm. you will ensure that they cross the boundary and clear it exactly right yes yes right exactly okay now the now the pmp exam is changing very soon and the, all mm -hmm. the process groups all the knowledge areas will be no more one question i keep on getting that i am an it professional and the mm -hmm. pmp is changing 50% to agile exactly. 50% yeah. traditionally so should i go for pmp after january or should i being an it professional should i take exam now see what again, are see first of all uh, you know that's the, i i get this question a lot as well amir you know that you know uh, i'm saying <clears throat> so my recommendation is that don't even think about it to move to january make sure that you pass the exam before january and my reasoning for that is that you know a lot of people want this three letter word after their name so sure. if you get it today if you get it after january it doesn't make a difference because ultimately what you were aiming for is this three letter word now why my reasoning is to give for a exam now is first of all this course specifically the 6th edition have been mm -hmm. since 2018 april 2018 when it was launched okay. so okay now within this two year span i have thousands and thousands of students who have actually okay. passed the exam now okay. with me you can see that you know i'm you know i'm a very approachable person i talk to every student of mine and i build more of a friendship relationship instead of a professional relationship with my student so you know i take constant feedback from students you know the the feedback is very very important and based upon that feedback that is how we know that okay this is more important topic this is less important this is something you know we can ignore from the exam perspective starting january we are not sure about it why because we are not sure so that database of wealth of knowledge which we have made it will take some time in order to and it's not just with me it's for all the other providers who are doing the same thing right it's ap applicable across the board second thing i have seen this trend that whenever pimbok uh, pmi comes with a change they have made the exam more difficult so uh, you know and and again i may be wrong that this time may make it different that they change it but this has been the trend with this you know use the trend analysis tool which we use so based upon those things if we want to pass the exam and we don't want to go into a diff more difficult one now is the time to make sure you go with that that's that's what yes yes that's good that's good that's great how you summarize it now a follow up question to this now the construction people ask since pmp is going to become agile so if i give exam right now will the value of pmp will decrease yes we know that 1 million pmp are certified but now this is becoming more like a certified scrum master or a certification that is towards more towards agile because you know that being a pmp mentor mm -hmm. construction people have no idea what agile is i was talking uh, 30 minutes ago with one of us, my student mm -hmm. that uh, he is a basically electrical civil engineer he mm -hmm. asked i told him that exam will be changed and become agile 50% and he mm -hmm. said what is agile yeah what is uh, seriously what is right. agile so right. with 50% coming construction people are saying that pmp will not be relevant to construction anymore what are mm -hmm. your thoughts on that i i honestly don't agree with this statement uh, mm -hmm. see agile is a methodology which could be used across the board so sure. um, right now i have actually given so many students pmi acp like there are so many students in our pmi acp who are from construction industry specifically okay. in the middle east market okay, in okay, canada okay. so we okay. they are already doing so agile is coming and it's you know coming heavily in the agile industry uh, in in the construction industry at all, as well so again the thought process has to change over here it's we are talking about complete mindset that you know agile is only for it no not at all true agile could be used in any industry type it's basically telling you that you know you are receptive to change how you can embrace the change how you can make sure that you know things are done in a better way so i'm very much into it and i'm pretty sure with passage of time as more and more people do it they will understand the importance of agile in construction or biotechnology or any particular domain it doesn't matter at all trust me on that so we shouldn't consider agile as a life cycle we should consider agile as more of a mindset because that's exactly. how things are working because construction sector is also no more 100% predictable with all that technology coming mm -hmm. in the uh, coming in the field and all that tools it is entering there right. so and change is always there 
absolutely so we have to accept it that agile is more of a methodology as compared to life cycle so if absolutely. we take it from there from the mindset construction can becomes the most unpredictable environment and most acceptable to agile what are absolutely. your thoughts on that right I, I, you know what amir actually you you asked me a question and you have answered it so perfectly <laughs> that i cannot even say anything on top of that i mean okay. that's exactly my thought processes you are okay. on the same line you perfectly summed it up it's hats off to you on this okay okay what do you think what will be the top 3 skills apart from now we are moving a little bit away from pmp and more of a project management what are the top 3 skills for future project managers and how to develop these things and i'm talking about like in a decade not in a one year or two years maybe mm-hmm. in a decade how do you see because with us being as a consultants we need to see the future right 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 so uh, uh, amit that's a good question um, from the long term vision i am seeing that you know ai is coming into mix a lot okay. uh, artificial intelligence has you know has a lot of uh, input so i think we need to make sure that you know we are equipped with ai and okay. uh, try to understand more about that okay there could be like you know a lot of people have a misconception that you know ai would take our jobs we will start losing jobs there would be robots you know doing this no you know there is always a manual intervention required just like for my pmp mentor program it's that you know we could have easily automated it we could have easily said that you know do this do that on their own because videos and questions are already created but no there is a human mix which is i personally mentor them so same logic applies to you know artificial intelligence also you need someone to operate that ai right so we have to go on those mindset and i think we should embrace it and start learning more towards the artificial intelligence which for me is the one of the top skill i would say one of the top skills to learn about ai and how ai works and how it can benefit it maybe right. if we can move towards that and we can lead that trend okay, exactly what are the thoughts about communication skills since mm-hmm. we are project managers mm-hmm. and as in your journey i understand communication skill is one of your success right communication skill is one of the success that's why you are getting better more and more students same goes with me so mm-hmm. what do you think with ai with digital things coming how important the communication will be communication skills always play the most important part you know um, every time in my training i always say that you know 90% of the time you know a life of a project manager they spend on communication that's exactly sure. what we do we are doing it right now also this is communication what we are doing so if you can not convey your message conveniently then i think you don't stand anywhere simple as that either it is verbally it is non verbally it doesn't matter the main purpose should be that you know you should be able to communicate your message now um if you ask me personally why my mentor program is quite very successful is i think it's purely purely because of communication skill the way you are delivering a message to the other person you know most of the uh, students are people like us in the same industry okay. same domain so we have to make sure we try to give them real life examples so that they can relate to it and that's all communication so that's all i'll say so communication has been the single most factor for people to become successful exactly. and communication will keep on becoming the number one skill that you can acquire to become the number one person in your field and with the digital era you need communication more than ever as you give an example of your pmp mentor program there can be other program but the reason your program is successful because you have given a human touch to it exactly. you have you have made up area where with all the videos that are automated with all the questions that are automated with the simulator you have a human touch where you can call and ask varun hey varun i am getting panic because yes, this yes. is a thing that really happens with pmp students they right. do get panic along the way but if mm-hmm. there is a mentor to calm them to help them along the way they can become a better person right, they right, can right. become a better managers now how organization can benefit from certified project managers we all know that according to a survey 25% salary of a certified project managers is better than mm-hmm. non certified but mm-hmm. how exactly organization can benefit because whenever i get a call from a company from mm-hmm. hr their first question is always this how an organization can benefit from a certified project manager uh, absolutely that's a that's a good question so see 
you are doing pmp not just to get this three letter word after your name you are learning the project management methodologies which they have explained right um i would be honest with you before i did pmp i never used work breakdown structure in my okay. real day to day life okay. right this was the first thing a new skill a new knowledge which i gathered from pmp and that is something which i went back and started applying for it so there are so many things work breakdown structure risk register like risk register risk is everybody knows there is a risk right but do we actually practice risk management not every organization does that so the things which we learn from pmp we can certainly go ahead and make sure that we like for example you know most of the companies have a, a procurement department who deal with contracts and stuff but now you know about what type of contract they are using how you know which why you are using that could actually definitely add value to the at an organization level that now they have a project manager who is no doubt a pmp certified and on top of that knows what you are talking about so so if you want to increase your value then pmp is the way forward pmp is something that you can ensure that your persons are pmp they will manage the project in the best possible way we have so many question lined up but we are running out of time i think we can do it maybe next other next time with a different topic if varun is available oh absolutely i will be more than happy okay. to i really enjoyed the conversation same here same here so friends i will summarize this thing that the varun said in the start if you want to become pmp before exam changes there is no shortcut there is only one path and that path is hard work smart work be persistent be humble along the way and be ready to ask for help because when you ask for help you what you are doing basically you are accepting that this thing is something difficult and i need some mentor i need some coach who can guide me along the way to clear this exam and for this you can ask varun for help and varun we will be more than delighted to help you thank you varun thank you for your time and hopefully we we'll see you again okay guys yeah, thank you bye so bye. much have a good day bye bye